Hi everyone, it's Cajun DIY Diva, and it's been a long time since I did a painting video, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to paint um, this image. Here's another one. This is similar. Um, this is a Lucky Dog cart. This is very famous in New Orleans. Um, it was immortalized in the Pulitzer Prize winning book, Confederacy of Dunces. Uh, which is a hilarious book. Everyone should read it. Um, you might not quite get it if you've never been to New Orleans, but um, it does have quite a few characters that there are real people in New Orleans that are like that. So you should read the book. There's also a book called Finding Ignatius, which is about the lucky dog business. So that's another um, book that you can read, um, but you just Google images of Lucky Dogs, New Orleans, and this is a really iconic um, image in from New Orleans, uh, especially the French Quarter, so, but um, they're Lucky Dogs, you know, all over the city now, Lucky Dog carts, so um, I'm painting this image for class, I think I had one before, that was just like this, but I think I gave it away, so I have to repaint it because I have a class tonight. So, um, just to, before you get started, you always want to be set up before you start painting because it makes it much easier. I'm all about making painting easy. Um, this is going to be a pretty simple um, painting project. Um, so, what you want to do is you want to have your paints ready. I have a palette here, just a paper plate. Um, I have a water cup to rinse my brush. Um, I have my paints already poured out. I have my brushes ready. Um, also, I don't use really fancy brushes to paint. Not for be It's not necessary for beginners to have really fancy brushes. So if you want to get started painting, you can go to, you know, the biggest craft store around you and maybe get a little pack of, you know, small tubes that have a lot of different colors in them. Start with acrylic paints. Acrylic paints clean up with water. You don't need any special solvents to clean them up. And today's acrylic paints are very good. So it's not like in the past when if you wanted a good painting, you had to have um, oil paints. I also want to show you something. What's coming up for our, an upcoming painting video, we are going to paint crab shells. This is going to be awesome and make ornaments out of them. So stay tuned for that. Um, subscribe to my channel. I'm also going to be doing some new um, apron sewing videos, so um, stay tuned because I have a lot of ideas that are going to be popping soon. So just subscribe to my channel and you'll get a notification when I get to put up a new video. So, okay, let's get started. So, I've already sketched it. Um, these are uh, painting instructional videos, not drawing videos, but it's a pretty simple shape. You just have a long oval for the hot dog, and then you make a curved bun. Very simple drawing. It's just a curve underneath, a curved bun on top. And then this is just a box, a box, and basically a couple of triangles for the um, umbrella. So it's not very difficult. Pretty much um, most people could handle this level of painting. So I'm going to start out with the street, and I'm going to make a gray. I just took some black and white, and I'm just going to quickly smudge in the street. And I go pretty fast. Don't expect to paint as fast as I do. Um, it's a good thing to do. If you want to take on this project to, you know, pause it now and then and just kind of paint at your own speed. Don't try to paint as fast as I do because I'm kind of a speed type painter. 
so I don't want you to get discouraged just because you can't paint as fast as I do. It's not, you're not supposed to. But for the purposes of the video, I know you don't want to watch a three hour video, so I'm going to paint fast for the video. But, um, and you see how I had a little line right here. I'm just painting right over it. Don't be so worried about, you know, you can go over the edges in your painting. Don't worry about painting so perfectly around everything. Okay, so see, I did the street that fast. I just kind of t made a gray, but then I just add extra white on my brush. See, I'll just pick up just white on my brush and just brush it in. And sometimes I leave it kind of chunky, you know, and not brush it all the way in. And maybe I'll pick up a little more black and just kind of define the line over here for it's kind of the horizon line, the street line. So just kind of define that a little bit. Okay. Um, Okay, sorry about that. I had a little camera issue, but it's resolved now, hopefully. So, um, I've finished my street, the gray part of my street. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And this is, um, this is cobalt blue. Um, also, you know, when you're a beginner, the colors you use aren't that important, you know, pick, pick some colors that you like how they look, and I like this cobalt blue, um, it blends well with white, and see I'm just kind of blending it in to give it just a blue hue into the street, not, not a major color in the street. It's just kind of almost looks like the street's wet. And that's all I'm going to do with that. Now I think I'll p go ahead and paint the hot dog because it needs to dry so that I can put the mustard on it. So I'm going to ha go ahead and paint it. And my paint's a little translucent. I may need a second coat of red paint on here, but that's okay. And the the hot dog is not doesn't have too much blending or anything going on. It's just pretty much bright red. Okay, so that's painted in, and you see it's not perfect. No. One thing I want you to banish from your vocabulary when you're painting is the word perfect. Forget about that word. Nothing needs to be perfect. Um, this is kind of whimsical, a little on the abstract side, but what it is not, absolutely not, is, is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the red part of the umbrella. Get that going. And I'm just filling it in right over the, all the lines. We're going to come in and outline a little bit when it's, when I'm kind of at the end stage. And then I'm also going to paint red this red box. This is kind of where he has like his menu items and you know his chips and everything's listed on here. So this is a is um painted bright red. I'm going to do the little side part a little bit darker. I'm going to paint it in red and then Maybe just put the tiniest little, I'm going to get the tiniest little speck of black on my brush and then wipe it off. 
and then just brush that right in. You don't too, you don't want too much black in there. You just want a little bit to just kind of give it that little bit of darkening right there. So now I think I will mix up a color for the background and I think I'm going to do instead of the green that I used that one time I think I'm going to use yellow for the background. Let's just say the wall is like a yellow stucco wall. So I'm going to take some of this deep yellow and mix it with some white. And I'm going to use a bigger brush to paint this. So I've got a little bit bigger brush. I'm going to start painting the background in yellow. Um, I'm going to add a lot of white because I do have some pencil marks in the background that I don't want them to show up too much. I had something drawn on this canvas, which that's another thing. Reuse canvases. If you drew something on a canvas you decide you didn't like that, reuse it. You can always paint um, gesso over it and um, create something new with it. Just because you drew something on it, it's not wasted. Um, the masters back in the time of uh, the French Impressionists, I, it just, I'm sure every art historian would love to see what was painted underneath um, some of the famous, famous like Monet or Degas paintings because they they often um, just repainted something over it. They didn't like it. They just painted something over. Probably what would have been what we would have considered a masterpiece. I'll pick up more white now because it's kind of bright yellow right there. And if the pencil marks don't go away as much as you want them to, it's okay if you see them a little bit, you know? I, I think it's okay. Um, but if they don't go away as much as you want them to, maybe you just need to add something in the background to cover them up, you know? Maybe I'll add a lamppost. I think I had a lamppost in my original picture, so maybe I'll do that, you know? gives it more of a street look anyway, a French Quarter look. And, you know, this is a building in the background, so you could paint a window, a door, or something like that. Anything. But see how right here it's kind of rough? I like the look of that. It's just very kind of... You can see the white blended in there. I'm not blending it in too much either, you know. I want to see all that variation. And let me come back on this side. Just add some more of that kind of stucco look with more white, chunky white. Um, I like to use paint that is on more white now. Um, I like to use paint that is thick because it just gives you more texture. Um, and I just think it's more fun to paint with. Of course, don't do what I just did and flat paint all over your table. But that's okay. This is a very rustic table and it can take it. So um, it's always good to cover your painting area with a plastic tablecloth or something like that. Use an old shower curtain, anything. Okay, so there is my background. And I'm not liking the shape of my umbrella, so I'm going to bring this over, bring my yellow over a little bit. 
And see, you can change if you have something drawn on there. You don't. You're not like stuck to that. You can change it. My my um, thing is squeaking today. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm going to do the bun color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this light yellow that I mixed up and I'm going to add some um, dark umber to it. Try to make a brown color. So it's y this y deep yellow, this burnt umber, and white. And it's going to make like this tan color. So. There we go. Mixed up a little bit of kind of a tan color. And just brush that right on top. Anything that you mix white into, white will make it opaque. So if you want to cover something, like cover pencil marks or something, just mix white into your color. And it will help to cover See, uh, just like magic, I just covered all those old pencil marks and you can't see them anymore. And I'm going to make my bun, lower bun, a little more prominent. Use all that paint that was stuck to my brush. And even if you see some pencil marks, see right there, that was kind of a heavy pencil mark. I'm just gonna let that be part of the painting. That's kind of it's kind of blending right into my paint right there. It's kind of a nice thing. So um, now let's see. I made some dark brown um, right here, and how I did that was I mixed red, blue, and yellow. Mixed the three primary colors pretty evenly, and you will get brown. So, um, you don't have to buy, you really can get away with um, black, white, red, yellow, blue. For if you just want to start painting and you just want to buy a few basic tubes, they sell basic color to, um, uh, sets with just those colors. Um, there are a lot of artists that don't like to use um, black, but I do. I like black. Um, but you can mix like a phthalo blue and with like a red and it'll kind of make, if you put a lot of the blue, it'll make a black. So this is like his little box, like a little cooler thing that's on the side. And I need this other brush to do this. So, um, yeah, so this is just a little box on the side and it says New Orleans tradition. So I'm just going to kind of maybe paint the this little side part a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll even put a little bit of that light brown into it, try to blend it up a little bit better. But it doesn't look great right now. Don't give up. It's not finished yet. Don't worry about it. It's going to get better. Doesn't look that great now, but it will get better. Okay, now I'm going to use. Um, some chrome yellow because I want a little bit different brighter yellow for my up here for my umbrella and for when I do the mustard so but the chrome yellow is very translucent so I'm going to paint a little white on first just to cover up those pencil lines because this yellow will not cover those pencil lines. It is um, much too translucent. But you can use 
um, any yellow you want and you can let it mix with white and then just come over it with more of the yellow, the same yellow, and add to it and it will make it brighter. You see, I'm just kind of blotting that on there, glopping it. That's my word, glopping. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to make um, some mustard squishes right there, blobs of mustard. It doesn't look like much now, but we may have to we may have to add some white to this to make it look right. The red could still be a little bit um, wet, so it doesn't look perfect yet, but that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna go to my black. And I'm going to paint the wheels. And this is by no means a perfect circle. Don't expect it to be. It is not. Okay, and I think I'll have to let it dry a little bit, but I'm going to put a street lamp right here. So I'll do kind of the base of it here. I don't think my yellow is dry enough yet to do the whole thing. I can start it out and see what happens. Now, notice that is not a perfectly straight line. What did I say about that word perfect? And we don't use that. Now the, the actual lamp, it's like two triangles. So it's a triangle for the top and you fill in the top and a triangle for the bottom where the light source is. And I'll just put like a little dot on top. Oop. Now I am going to start my, even though it's not really at the finishing point, well I'm going to try to fix this mustard because I don't like how this came out. So I'm going to add a little white to my yellow from my mustard and just try to fix that, make it look a little bit better. There. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I like how that looks now. Um, now I'm going to do... I've got a fine brush, a fine tip brush, and I just dropped it in white paint. Okay. I'm going to dip it in my black I don't want a big glob of black on there, but I'm going to start outlining. Just to define the painting a little bit more, because it's very whimsical. This type of outlining adds to the whimsy. This is not like something you would do for what I would call a serious painting. This is something you would do for something that's very whimsical. And you'll find that when you outline something, it covers the boo-boos. So if you have things that, you know, you think don't look quite right. And you see how I'm not doing this perfect outline either. See the wavy line? That just makes it more whimsical. And you'll find this very whimsical art is very popular in New Orleans. And you see how you can see the white right here. 
it's not touching, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. When you do the finished painting, it's it's. I find it's hard for a lot of my students to grasp the the concept that your art doesn't have to be perfect. They seem to have trouble with that. But we're working on it. I keep trying to, I keep plugging away, trying to teach them that, and some of them are getting it. And they're kind of, you have to kind of let yourself go and let, forget all the rules that you think apply to painting or whatever it is. Maybe you're someone who does construction and you're used to things having to be perfect. No, they don't. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm not going to outline right here yet because that's wet. So now I'm going to go back to this very light brown that we use for the bun. I'm going to do it just a little bit lighter even. And I am going to write um, New Orleans tradition right here. These letters do not have to be perfect. And but if it helps you, you know, you could wait until this is, it has to be all the way dry. But it might help you to maybe use a paint marker for this. Or um, what I'm going to show you, you don't even have to do the words. You know, you can get by without words and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. Okay, there's New Orleans tradition. And now I'm going to do the same thing, more of the ye light yellow. And so let me clean my brush a little bit. And so over here, you don't want too much on your brush. You kind of load your brush and then wipe some of it off. And I'm just going to just do some squiggly lines. It's, it's far, it's in the distance. You can't read it anyway. It's too far away to read those words. So there you go. So, now, my bun, is, my top bun is dry. So I am going to use my red and write the words Lucky Dogs on my bu top bun, because that's where it goes in the picture. Um, and a good thing to do is when you're, um, you can either write it out in a pencil, it's a good thing to do is write it out on a piece of paper first, and find out where the middle is. Because if you look at this, you don't want to start right here and then get to the end and you're only at, oh, you know, you don't want to do your legs, your letters too big. So it's a good thing to start out your lettering in the center. So if I start with my Y over here, then I know I'm not going to go too far. And I'll do, I'll go ahead and do my D for my lucky dogs. Then I know I'm going to have enough room for all of my lettering. And I'll just kind of write lucky backwards. And that also helps. Okay, so now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to come back and, um, and outline, put a little bit of a black shadow on the letters. Um, but I'll go ahead and, since I've got my yellow and red out, I have red on my brush. I'm going to also dip my brush in yellow. 
and do a little flame right here in the in the lamp. So there's just a little it's just a smudge for the flame. And uh, now I'm gonna do dip my brush in the white and I'll do just kind of a little um, give, give the lamp post a little a little character. A little highlight there, highlight up here, a little highlight in there. And let's see, I'll give a little character in the wheels, like a little, that's probably a little too much. I'll just go back to the black and blend that in. And same thing over here with this wheel. Just kind of give it a little vizhuzh. Now, um, I'm going to try with the black and give myself a little, a little outline right here going across. Wait for you guys, wait until everything's dry before you start trying to outline. I've done this a few times so I can kind of get away with it, but I, for you guys I would suggest that you wait a little bit. And now I am going to just give my letters a little bit of a shadow on each one. Try to kind of do it on the same side of the letters for each one. So well, I kind of didn't do it to follow my own advice right there. But like I said, no one is going to look at this and say she put the the shadow on the wrong side. Um, so it's pretty good now. It's it's looking good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I think I'm going to give it maybe a little something really special down in the bottom. And I'm just going to draw myself a little blue dog here. So I'm just going to do blue dog's face. It's kind of an oval with ears out to the side. Maybe I should do a cat. I don't know. No, I think I'll do a dog. And. Here's his little body. I need a little water on my blue paint because it's very thick and it's not um, painting as smoothly as I want. Just fill this in right here. And add some more. Add a nose and eyes. It's not a perfect blue dog. It's just kind of reminiscent of one. And do the little spots for his eyeballs and give him a little, you know, a little bit of an outline. And he's my inspiration because he's a lucky dog, so what's he going to get that makes him lucky? He's going to get a little wiener in his mouth. And give that red a little yellow to go with it to make it kind of 
stand out more. Go back to the red. He's got a lucky. He's a lucky dog. He got a hot dog. So that's about it. This is Cajun DIY Diva. Please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time.